Hello again. So, part 5 was the last part of the construction phase of this build-along series, but uh, I thought I would also do a quick bonus episode just to talk about a few other things that are kind of related or that might be of interest. So, first off, one of the things that I probably should have mentioned is the fact that when you're gluing the wall pattern to the cardboard, it's best to have it so that the corrugation is running perpendicular to the long edge of the walls, if that makes sense. Basically, when we're cutting the wall into strips, we're aiming for something like this, instead of something like this. Another thing you might like to do is, instead of gluing the pieces of scatter terrain to the bases provided, like this one here, you, uh, you might prefer to use a clear base instead. So, this kind of thing. And this was made by just cutting out a circle from the packaging that a miniature came in. But, uh, any kind of clear plastic packaging should be fine. And since I just mentioned miniatures, the ones I used in the video are plastic models from the Reaper Bones range. Uh, here's a quick picture to show them in a bit more detail. However, I will say that the Ghast, he does come in a pack of three, so he's accompanied by two other ghouls, but uh, they do have a similar miniature that you can buy separately, but I don't think it looks quite as good as this one. Now, obviously, you can find similar models in other ranges, so uh, feel free to post any suggestions in the comments for others to take a look at, but uh, as I say, these are the ones that I already have. Anyway, regarding the tiles themselves. As I've already mentioned, you don't have to use corrugated cardboard, and a better, though more expensive option, is to use foam core instead. And if you're having trouble with the glue warping the tiles, or if you just don't want to waste time waiting for the glue to dry, then you can also print the textures onto sticky back label paper, which, uh, which makes the entire process even quicker. So, as an example, here's a small tile using both of these options, before any of the walls have been glued into place. And while I'm on the subject of printing out the textures, I, uh, I do sometimes get asked what sort of printer I use. And, in all truth, I'm currently using the cheapest inkjet printer that I could find. It's a Canon MG2550S. It cost around £25 brand new, but uh, that might have been in a sale, and the price of printers does seem to have gone through the roof lately, but, uh, as I say, I've been using this one for a few years now. And the only thing I want to add to that is, replacement cartridges can be expensive, so uh, before you go out and buy a printer, I'd recommend that you check to see if you're able to refill the ink yourself, if that's something you're interested in trying. Um, there's usually videos here on YouTube that show you how to do that kind of thing, but uh, as a quick example, here's the black cartridge from my own printer, and I'll just quickly remove the label from the top, and here's the cheap refill ink that I bought from eBay. So if I fill the syringe with a bit of ink, all I'll need to do then is find the little hole in the top of the cartridge and insert the syringe, and you should feel the needle go into some kind of sponge material. And all we're really doing is saturating that sponge with more ink, or uh, at least that's what I think we're doing. And when that's done, we can put the sticker back on top and run the printer through a quick cleaning cycle. Though I will add that, in my experience, you can only refill a cartridge around half a dozen times before the print quality starts to degrade or uh, it just stops working altogether. But uh, yeah, it can still save quite a lot of money. Anyway, another thing I'd like to mention is magnetic tape. So this is the kind of thing that I like to use to, uh, to make sure that my own tiles don't move around too much during play. And as you can see, you don't actually need to use all that much. So if I bring in a magnetic whiteboard, um, if you're in the UK, you can pick one of these up from Wilco's for around £5, I think, and uh, you can see how the tape really helps to keep them all in place. But if you can't find magnetic tape where you are, then there's also the option of buying magnetic paper, or just thin magnetic sheets like this one here. And the only difference is that you'll have to cut it into little strips, or squares, and, uh, and use glue or double-sided tape to, to stick it to the bottom of the tiles. Anyway, before I go, I'd also like to say that if you didn't like the fact that I left the adventure a bit open-ended, then if you kept the little offcut from the second batch of tiles that we made, um, that's this piece here, 
you can add some walls around the edge, but this time we're going to make it so that the two side walls overhang the end by half an inch. And rather than having the chest appear in room 3, we can instead have that room be empty, and it's when the wall is broken down that the characters find the chest, and uh, inside is whatever treasure you think is appropriate. Alternatively, if you're looking for a few more puzzles to add to a second level, then I have a couple of PDFs over on the DMs Guild that might be of interest. So, I hope you found some of these ideas useful. Um, if you have any of your own that you'd like to share, then please do post them down in the comments, and if you have any other questions, then feel free to post those as well. But I think that's pretty much it for this one, so thanks for watching as always. Um, I don't say this very often, but if you could share this little mini-series anywhere where you think it might be appropriate, then uh, that would be a big help. Anyway, thanks again. I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this series, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.